Now that we understand that we can use Q to find what direction a reaction must go to reach equilibrium, let's take it one step further and actually find out how far the reaction needs to go to reach equilibrium. And in doing that, we can find the equilibrium concentrations of the species involved. So here I give you a reaction and I tell you it's part of an equilibrium. I give you its equilibrium constant. And then also I give you some initial concentrations of the species involved. One thing you want to note is that sulfur is a solid, which means it's not going to be in, e in the equilibrium. And what we do is we say that there is just an excess of sulfur involved in the equilibrium, so we can just ignore it during our calculations. So what we want to do now is find out what direction the reaction's going, and then more importantly, what's going to be the new concentrations of O2 and SO2 once we reach equilibrium. So the first thing we need to find is Q. And Q is just our equilibrium expression with non-equilibrium values. So we find our equilibrium expression, so that's products divided by reactants, and remember sulfur is not involved. And then we plug in our initial values for our O2 and SO2. Once we plug them in, we calculate the Q value, which is 0.5, and then we compare Q to K and see what the real relationship is. In this case, Q, 0.5, is less than K, 4.2, which means the reaction must go to the right to reach equilibrium. So now what we need to know is how far does the reaction need to go to reach equilibrium? And so we're going to use a mathematical value of X to be equal to the amount or uh, distance that the reaction needs to go to reach equilibrium. So what I do is I start with the initial concentrations of my species, and then I say as the reaction is going to the right, we are using up oxygen and we are making SO2. So that's why there's a negative value here that means that as the reaction goes to the right, we're using up oxygen, and as we're going to the right, we are making SO2. How much? We don't know. That is what we are going to be solving for x. So once we make this conceptual idea, we then take these numbers and plug it into our equilibrium expression. And we set that next to or equal to the equilibrium constant. And then what we need to do is actually solve for k. So after this, it's just a little bit of algebra. But I found out that this is one of the main problems students have with these types of problems is doing the algebra. So I'm just going to walk you through uh, the algebraic solution to this problem. So what we want to do is isolate the value of x on one side. So the first thing I want to do is multiply both sides by 2.00 minus x. Once we get up here, we want to get rid of the bracket, bracket so we multiply through. So 4.2 times 2 is 8.4, and 4.2 times minus x gives us 4.2x. Then I add 4.2 to both sides. So 4.2x on the left gives us 5.2x, and then 4.2x uh, minus 4.2x on the right-hand side uh, gives us 0. So the next thing I want to do is subtract 1 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, the 1 cancels out. On the right-hand side, 8.4 minus 1 gives me 7.4. And then I want to solve by x by dividing through by 5.2. So on the left-hand side, I get x, and on the right-hand side, I get 1.42. But we're not quite done yet. So remember, x is the distance the reaction needed to go to get to equilibrium. So I need to do one final calculation. So remember, I said that at equilibrium, our concentration SO2 is going to be equal to the initial concentration, which is 1.00, plus x. So the equilibrium concentration is going to be 2.42 molar. Same thing for O2. The concentration of O2 at equilibrium is going to be 2.00 minus x. So this was our initial concentration. We subtract off x, and we get our equilibrium concentration of O2, which is 0.57 molar.